Well, plenty of families are really looking forward to a break this spring. Our go-to grandma, Kathy Buckworth, joins us with ways that grandparents can help make that transition easy. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And this is an unusual spring break, as we know, for Ontario. It's later. And it's also one, maybe in the past, you know, grandparents have been able to help out a little bit more with the kids. Maybe we had some multi-generational travel going on. But this year, it's a whole other ball game. So I wanted to just introduce a few things to help maybe parents, grandparents, grandkids to get together in any way they can in a safe form, of course. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to actually start with um, cooking with your grandkids. Now, all of these snacks that I have made are super simple. So you could do them over Zoom to a little Zoom cooking class with your little grandkids. And or you could make them and drop them off and give mom and dad a break for making some snacks or do them in person if you happen to be in their bubble, which would be amazing. So I've actually been working a lot with vegan baby foods. How's that? Because of my own grandson and vegan snacks. And one of the great things we've discovered is, of course, his love for fruit. And in particular, pears. So I have all the recipes I have here are pears. I think pears are an underrated fruit, you know? So, so much fiber about, in pears. So much fiber. You get yeah. six grams of fiber in every pear. Keep the skin on, of course. Wash yep. it. Keep the skin on. 21% of your fiber that you need in a day you can get from a pear. So it's amazing. How do you tell if they're ripe? I get asked this all the time. Check the neck is what they call it from USA Pears. I've been working with them and they say, check the neck. If it's soft around the neck here, you're gonna find a nice sweet pear underneath. So what I have here are some actually some pear chips. So these are like literally sliced super thin, soaked in lemon juice, throw them in the oven and they're crispy pear chips. They are like a dehydrated fruit. If you don't have a dehydrator, dehydrator just use your oven at like 200 degrees or really low temperature and cook for about three hours. What I have in the front here, these I like to call pears in a pod. You remember like ants on a log? Yes, yes. <laughs> this is a variation. It's a variation. So these, again, kids love these little things. What a healthy snack. Celery, peanut butter, and some pears on top can make it in like two seconds. Um, and then the top one I have, it's the, P the PB&J pear bouquet. How's that for fancy? So Very I've got fancy. A very, I'm pretty fancy as you know, Annette. So I've got my fancy uh, cookie cutter here. Simple cookie cutter, doesn't waste a lot of the bread. Just, snap, you know, put that on your brown bread here and put on some peanut butter jam and some pears. It makes it really fun for the kids. So maybe doing some cooking with them online. The other thing we want to do is some grandparents don't live within distance of just visiting for the afternoon. It can be, you know, a 12 hour drive. It could be even further than that. I'm booking.com has done some research that shows that 76% of travelers are more worried about health and safety at their hotel than anything else. Something that really wasn't on our radar before. Mm -hmm. I personally am going to be moving into a hotel, a residency in Marriott Hotel down the street from my daughter's house so I can be there for three weeks before she gives birth to my second grandson. So I was able to find out if you book long-term stays, you can get some great rates. You can get the rooms that you want. I'm gonna have a kitchenette. Of course, the health and safety standards are up to scratch. So I'm gonna be able to be close to them. And I would encourage other grandparents, you know, if you can only still be outside with them, spring is here. So, you know, maybe move a little bit closer, stay over for the weekend, obviously in a healthy and safe way and make sure, you know, that you can drive there. Most of us wanna drive for our vacations right now. And really you can give a helping hand just by being at the park at the same time. So yes, yeah. something to think about. I had this little phone here cause it cracked me up. Cause it's like, we don't just phone our grandkids anymore. Okay, we get online with them, we go visit them. So. <laughs> While we're, visit, while we're visiting them outside, of course, we need to be wearing masks and indoors, of course, sometimes. So I love this thing. It's from Shop Tori Halpin. And what it is, it's a beaded mask holder. So when you're whipping the mask off, you're whipping it on, maybe having a sip of coffee, you're playing in the park. Look at the grandma one. Look at that one, Annette. Very um, nice. Very nice. So it's a really great accessory. It's a way to not put your mask down. And also, sometimes we pull the mask down, it lands on our neck, but our neck could have been you know, out, you know, getting exposed with our hands, et cetera. So this way it just drops it right onto your shirt. You can pull it right back up again. So I love this. And one of the things I wanted to promote with this mask strap is tomorrow is Purple Day. And for those of you who don't know, Purple Day is actually an awareness day for epilepsy. One in 100 Canadians suffer from epilepsy, including my good little friend, Avery Thornberry. And so she has prompted me to get this mask and I'm gonna wear it proudly tomorrow. Uh, purple day so if you can go to epilepsyshop.org and check out what they have there and 100 percent of the proceeds go to support people living with epilepsy today okay well very good luck in your in your very safe stay then ahead of your uh, thank you becoming a grandma again good for you yes second time thanks for that <laughs> all right thank you nice to see you